All right, cool, let's go. Phone on silent and away. Flipped, silent. I'm okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'm here for this energy. <laughs> it's genuinely because I just woke up from a nap. Oh. Because if I had come at four when we were originally supposed to record, I'm telling you, I was just like, yeah. Hey. I thought it was on silent. <laughs> it's on silent. It's on silent now. Okay. <sighs> hey. Hi. <laughs> well, if you guys are watching this, you're clearly on the YouTube channel, which two years on, we, we finally, finally did, did it. it. <laughs> and um, we look good. Marissa's wearing a shirt that says, These are your boobs on drugs. I'm not, I'm not sure if this was allowed in Singapore. I was actually slightly concerned about whether I was able to wear it in public. But it's a very expensive shirt to be a pajama shirt. It's okay. Shirt. You know, I've seen like aunties and uncles walking around with like the marijuana leaf like straight yeah. as like just part of their fashion. Like, yeah, this is, and, like, this is eggs. I've definitely seen an old man with a shirt that just said, sleep, drink, fuck. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this one time I had a massage and the lady had this like print and I zoomed in on the print and it literally was like, fuck me, fuck me. Like, <laughs> and it was like, it's like, instead of like obey. Yeah. It, it, but it was like, you didn't know it was a print till you looked at it. It was like tiny fuck me's, but it actually made a nice print. I once saw one that looked like this really abstract thing. And then you looked closer and they were all just different sex positions. Oh, I like that. It was actually a really nice shirt, but it was inspired by Kama Sutra and my mom didn't let me buy it from the store. <laughs> okay. Now, the real episode. <clears throat> <clears throat> the, tea, the tip of the tongue. The teeth the Did you know that if you have a hard time pronouncing a word, all you got to do is like put something in your mouth and then say the word like this. And actually what it does is that your mouth muscles work harder to form around the object blocking it so that by the time you move your, your, mus your finger, it takes you, can, less effort. It, you can just say it. What, give me a complicated... <laughs> What's a complicated word? What did, the, what did you say? Sassafras. What? Sassafras. What the? What? Sassafras? Uh, yeah, sassafras. What, say it in a sentence. It can't. <laughs> <laughs> sassafras. <laughs> I know it's a word. I don't know what it means. We'll get to this. Okay. You, you saw that. Let's just move on. We'll find the word in the... In the Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. All right, nerd. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Now, now say it. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. But do you feel like it's easier? Kind of, actually. All right. We're getting very distracted. Let's begin the episode. <laughs> oh, bye. Bye, puppy. Well, hey. Welcome to an episode of Just So We're Clear. Hanley here. Marissa here. And, um... Let's like check in with where we're at, what's been going on in the world, kind of like a diary stamp. Yeah. So the last time we got together, it was International Women's Day. It mm -hmm. was also our second birthday. And we spoke about womanhood. And in that time, what, I'm going to say three weeks? We've done a lot. Many things have happened. We both left the country once. Once, but for prolonged periods. You went back to Bali. I went to Austin, Texas for the very first time and New York again because it was right there. And now we're both back around the same time. It's been a really good week here in Singapore because as you guys know, the restrictions have changed. We can now hang out with 10 people. Ooh, I don't even know if I have I 10 know. friends now. I was like, that. I'm really happy. But also for you to presume that I can get 10 people together in one room like, I genuinely started counting on my hands and thinking, oh, no. Do babies count? <laughs> no, babies no, don't babies count. Babies don't count. But no masks outside. I am so happy about no masks outside because, Game let me changer. tell you, walking a dog oh, with the mask on, I, I, I can't. And now we can wear red lipstick again. <gasps> I didn't even think of this. Yeah. Think of all the bold lips that we've been missing out on because of masks. To be fair, I still tried to do it. It's just I was always shocked by the results whenever I took my mask And yet down. you still did. Yeah, I was because it, it was one of those really like sticky ones that kind of really stay on throughout the entire night. And I thought, mm. yeah, that'll that'll stay. OK, I have a question for you. Now that we are exiting the pandemic, I feel mm. 
what's one thing you're going to miss about this time? Oh. Right? Because we are really, we are, I feel it. I think the whole world is feeling it. We are exiting this COVID nightmare. But even though it has been a negative experience in a lot of aspects, there has been a lot of positivity that's come out of it too. A lot of realizations, maybe some habits that have formed, that we formed under the umbrella and safety of a oh, pandemic and all that. So what's something that you might miss from it? I think... The fact that everything slowed down and I know I'm so happy that we have the option to stay out past 1030 now and you know live music is coming back and all that sort of stuff but I liked being forced to go home to a level and waking up a bit fresher the next day because we were capping the evening earlier than we normally would yes for sure that's a really good answer because I think all of us can agree the lack of socializing after 1030 like my sleep schedule is on point right (laughs) it was like we were forced to really be mature about our sleep schedules and wake up fresh and dandy the next day so that you know i could go on a bike ride Mm -hmm. and not feel the devastating effects of dehydration and a hangover and now i'm just like well it's a free-for-all i think for me the one thing i might miss it really depends if it will stick around because the thing that i noticed um changed is that people care more You know what I mean? Like people, when you ask people, how are they? People are more open. People are more, um, yeah, thoughtful when you fall sick. Like people are really like, are you okay? Versus before when it was like, oh, okay. Do you think that's going to disappear? No, that's what I mean. Like that's something that I will miss under the like kind of maybe it might disappear. I don't think it'll fully disappear. I think these are habits that all of us have been like, wow, kindness and just humanity. Let's keep that around. I think that's the thing where both of our the, our things that we're going to miss kind of overlap is this idea of being forced to slow down and therefore being forced to care a lot more and pay a lot more attention to everyone. I really hope that does stick around because I like when people genuinely ask how you are and then you ask the same and I like that extra. Okay, yes, but on the other side of it, have you met people who just like tell you too much of how they are and you're like, oh, bro, I didn't actually want to know that much. No offense. I feel like I'm that person. I also think you're. <laughs> <laughs> but not like, but not too much. We all you have know our moments. Every waking thought. Maybe I've to me. Ever had. Maybe to me. It's like, how are you? And the door, the door opens, and I'm I really like, know how you, you are. No, here's my dumpster fire of a life. Yeah, to the point where I've had to be like, can you tell me when you're good? <laughs> I've actually had to tell Marissa, like, bro, can you, like, let me know? what? Like, can you just tell me you're good now and then? Because I feel like you've got so much a lot all the time. Like, are you okay? I think it's more that those are the eventful things that are worthy of note, but it isn't to reflect, like, the headspace I'm actually in. Because oftentimes I'll tell you stuff that's happened that I've already worked through and gone past. And I'm like, oh, but FYI, this happened. Just so you're aware that this moment passed. But not to say that I'm still sort of balls deep in it Hmm. you know because there's definitely times i've been like hey han so this is bad i can't sleep and everything else is on fire but we're good and i'm like yeah why are you smiling (laughs) because i'm actually good (laughs) (laughs) Uh, is this 30s yeah it's basically being able to look at everything that's caught fire and just been like (laughs) we'll get it out like we'll figure this out what's a big topic in your life right now Transition, change, evolution. Okay. Those are big words. Those are very abstract words. I apologize. I was enunciating those earlier with a finger in my mouth. (laughs) Do it now. Do it now. Transition, evolution. What was the last one? Evolving? Evolution. I I said that one. (laughs) If you guys don't know what we're talking about, you should really go check out the YouTube channel that we just launched. The YouTube channel. (laughs) We have a YouTube channel now. The link is in the description below. Go like, go subscribe. Um, Okay, I'm also, I think, in a very good season of change, but this is the change that I am controlling. It's a controlled change. (gasps) I'm taking charge of my own change, which is so refreshing. Explain. Okay, well, similar boats between you and I. I know you're going through a transition Mm work-wise. More on that later. Let's not discuss it till it's on paper. Correct. Right? Don't want to jinx it? Don't want to jinx it. Okay, so we'll we'll share after Marissa's stuff has been solidified. Yes. 
Uh, but for me, I think um, the the beginning of this year, you guys know, I've been going through a little bit of a what's the word? Hmm. Metamorphosis. Yes. I was going to say chrysalis, but I'm like, no, that's not it. It's, it's when you come out of the chrysalis. Yeah, the whole transition is metamorphosis. Shout out to David Meredith for making us read that book. Franz oh, Kafka. you read it? <laughs> <laughs> it was such a good book. You it should was, read it. It was. I did. It was about a cockroach. I do, I do remember that. Um, what was I saying? Yes. So I think at the beginning of the year, and it's the being the big lead up over the last two years, but I've kind of reached this moment where I couldn't fit in the space that I was in anymore. I felt like I was outgrowing a lot of aspects in my life. I was readjusting my values. I was readjusting what was important to me, relationships, even considering different locations, careers, just because I felt it in my bones and my spirit and my intuition that I can't do this. <laughs> just, just for dramatic effect, my dog is can't like, do this. <laughs> yeah, you can't do this. <laughs> um, I can't. I, I don't want to do this anymore. I wanted a challenge. And I have found an outlet for that. Um, and it is through my YouTube channel. And it's interesting because I do consider myself a very creative person. But I've always been in front of the camera. And to be able to be behind the scenes a lot thicker and learning how to produce. And to also see the skills that I've picked up throughout all the years of working in production. It's so rewarding. It's starting to to make me feel like, wow, this is a route that I can really go down and learn and explore and find a way to express my creativity that is in my own control. So basically, there is a moment of empowerment where you realized everything that you had racked up to build yourself up to this moment to bring everything under your own control and be like the master of your own creation sort of thing rather than being the product of everyone else's. Yes, it's really to take back. I mean, and I think I've done this for a long time, but Instagram and, you know, my other social media and podcast as well, like there is, we are in control of our own creativity. And I love that. I do love creating something and expressing through it. So I found another medium. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. It's really like, I really feel like I'm stepping into that role of this artiste self. This multimedia yeah. creator. Yeah. And I'm like, Give, I'm acknowledging myself along the way. But what are you saying goodbye to in that process? Because you're saying you're shedding a lot of the things that you're outgrowing. So what exactly are you outgrowing? The thing that I want to say goodbye to is I want to stop relying on external sources to um, a support me financially. And I want to stop... Base okay, so basically when you work as like a creative freelancer what you're doing a lot of the time is you are waiting or poaching clients. You're trying to attract people to you. So you're convincing people that you're their person. Yeah, you are a product essentially. Right. And especially in my line of work, what I've built my brand. Birds. 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 Sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear this through the mic, but the birds are back. Do you think it's like, you know how Pocahontas like attracts animals when she's thriving? Do you think this is us right now? And like the Singapore birds are like, we hear you. I'm going to say yes, just so it doesn't annoy me and I can spin it to a positive being like, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> They're just hyping us up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what did I was saying? Like when you are working as a creative freelancer or in any sense, you know, when you are really not your own boss, quote unquote, you know, you are relying on other people to give you money to make you feel of value and that's what I want to say goodbye to so this empowerment of feeling like okay this is the direction that I can do go to create my to be my own boss boss again in a different sense to create my own income to create my own creation uh, yeah creation yeah so so I'm saying goodbye to the pressure and the waiting and the the game that that you play when you're a freelancer of the insecurity I'm saying goodbye to that I mean I want to say goodbye to that I want to say goodbye to the feeling of it so what you're looking at is giving yourself more autonomy and like self-determination and then also in that you're saying I don't want to be malleable to what the brands and the products want me to be I want to just be what I decide and have people enjoy that as entertainment because I am an entertainer and creator. Yeah. Anyway. And I attract out of my authenticity. 
Yeah. Put it on a t-shirt. Put it on a t-shirt with like some mine. fried eggs. With some fried eggs. Like, talk about your boobs. And if you guys also didn't get that reference, then you should check out the YouTube channel because so you, you can, can see, see the what t-shirt. I'm wearing. Yeah. This was my best purchase of my trip, and it cost me more money than I'm willing to admit. But I saw how it in the how window. How much did you pay for that shirt? <clears throat> Do you want to guess? How much? How much did you? Fifty? Like a little up. Seventy. Sixty. Okay. For a white t-shirt with fried eggs, I paid $60, Hanley. Girl, you know not to talk to me about how much you pay for things to put on your body. I mean, the thing is that you and I have spoken at length about how I need to make more of an effort with my wardrobe, and I went ahead and did this. (laughs) And that was the point in time I realized, damn, Hanley's right. (laughs) I am making bad decisions. (laughs) Style-wise, like you're sat here in like zebra pants and a crop top, and I am a t-shirt with fried eggs on it. It's okay. That was a conscious choice, and as long as it was yours, I support it. Did did someone force you to buy that shirt? Honestly, I saw it and thought to myself, that is me. Yeah. So it's eggs. It's talking about boobs. It's talking about recreational drugs I don't even do. I love it. I love it. You know what this symbolizes? Evolution. (laughs) Growth, taking your power back. This, okay. I That's think, what we're going to say. I think this is the topic that, the theme of our life recently. Would you say that you, right now, the empowerment that you're feeling towards yourself is because you are taking your power back? Absolutely. That's a great way to put it. Because especially in these last couple of weeks, because before I left, I was in a bit of limbo uh, work-wise. And again, we'll discuss all that in detail later. But in, so the business trip that I was just on, it was when I could see myself sort of like out of body and be like, you're really good at what you do. Mm-hmm. And like, look at you go. And that was a great point in time. And I'm still riding that high now. And also there were just other things that I was doing on the trip that made me feel like I was alive. In we, so okay, alive. Listen, Marissa was flirting with guys. She was getting her drink on. She was being that bitch. She was the prettiest in the room. Don't, don't downplay it. Tell the people what kind of trip you had. Because That's, this is yeah. what I'm dying to hear. This, that is, it, this is the experiences I want everyone to be having. It was just so good because it's not like I was gunning to like, I don't know, hit on everyone or like hook up with everyone. That wasn't it at all. It was more just realizing that I was drawing attention. And previously, I would have seen that and been like, oh my God, they think I'm cute or they think I'm pretty. I would have left it at that. And then I just thought... What would happen if I tried here? Like, what would happen if I just... Made the first move. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I did a couple times with decent results. <laughs> Marissa made out with somebody. Yay! <laughs> He's going to listen to this because he follows our Instagram now. So. Good. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that and like I, I maybe hit on a celebrity and we'll have a date with him if I'm ever in L.A. Um... Please, if you listen to this, don't back out. And if <laughs> you guys want to know who the celebrity is, just message me and I'll tell you directly. Han will tell you. I will you. tell you. She'll play it cool. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not make this... I can't like, no, self-cock no, no, block on, here. No, honestly, guys, message me. <laughs> <laughs> self-cock block. Okay. <laughs> but it feels so good. And I think that this is something that we can ride off with things opening up, chapters coming to a close on this pandemic. It's to motivate ourselves to take back that power, whatever form that means to you. So for Marissa, it's going out there, trying, taking a different approach to something that previously she would have just, I don't know, laughed at, giggled at. Yeah, I I would have taken and been like, oh my God, someone thought I was hot. And that that would literally be it. And at this point in time, it was like, let's do something with that. Yeah. Let's see what happens. And also, so consequence-free. I think previously I would have been like, oh, what are the implications of this? How does this make you look? And someone I actually spoke to recently, I asked how they saw me, and they said, you are very conscious of how you portray yourself to others and how I portray myself differently to different groups of people. And I just, and they're right. And so it was just a kind of being like, what happens if I just let it go and just see what people think if I put all of it out on the table. Mm. Turns out pretty good. Good. I like who I presented. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> all my personalities. We should, we, <laughs> we should be liking ourselves at yeah. this point in our life. Or, Bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who knew? You're supposed to like yourself. <laughs> yeah. 
So I don't know, maybe you guys, maybe this is a little message that you needed to hear through us. Maybe you needed to buy a shirt with two eggs on your boobs at $60 to feel a little yeah. sense of taking back a bit of your power in whatever situation. But I am here for it. I support you. I love that me buying a t-shirt with eggs on it has become a motif of empowerment and like self-determination. Mm. See, okay. Like that gives this shirt way more meaning than when I bought it and now I will cherish it in a different way. 100%. Okay, I want to talk about this because I'm someone who I I wouldn't say I'm materialistic, but I definitely know what I like in terms of my things. For example, like I, I know what I want in terms of clothes. I know what I want in terms of like styling my house. Like I know my style and I will go out and seek it. Mm -hmm. But also I will use items as like sentimental timestamps of where I was in life. Absolutely. It's not just about chasing the item because it's beautiful, but it's also about getting it because this marks a moment of where I am right now. Like that box, that light box you have in your living room. I see that every single time and I think back to our trip in Portugal. Because and, and every moment I of that hand trip. carried it, fragile, wrapped it up because it mattered to me. Because in that moment, I was like, this is a really amazing trip. I want to take back something to look back on it. You were also going through a lot in that trip because I during that trip. Up. Yep. And you, not only were you dealing with like your heartbreak, you already knew that you had this apartment. And you were thinking of how you were going to make this space identifiably yours. And that was one of the first items you bought. So I wasn't actually thinking about that item, but that's a good one. For me, a big, something that I hold really close to my heart in terms of things I've purchased for myself was my first pair of Louboutins. As someone who has yet to buy their first <laughs> pair of Louboutins, I don't know how that feels, but go on. No, because you know what? It was a moment in my life where I was really happy with what I'd done, really proud with, of the ways that I'd grown. And I just, I just, I wanted to have this like, this like almost like some Louboutins are also a status thing isn't it because they're red and they're iconic and stuff but I wanted to buy this shoes to remember like that moment that in time. moment and to link it with something that to me when I was like younger looking at fashion magazines I was like oh my god mm. I want to wear those Louboutins so it was kind of like this aspirational thing it's that it's one of those that's her moments but through mm. shoes it was the aspirational <laughs> thing where suddenly you were like, actually, I'm in a position to do that now. Yeah, and one day I'm, I'm going to keep these Louboutins in prime condition. And one day I'm going to bring them out to my son or daughter. If either wants to wear them, I'm fine with that too. And tell my spawn why these shoes matter to their mother. And also what the history of they are. It's like an art piece. Oh, it's like passing things It's like on. an heirloom. Yes. I'm going to make this t-shirt an heirloom too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to basically pass this down to one of my children and be like, this is when your mother figured out she could get it. <laughs> and she put eggs on her breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it does remind me, because uh, this shirt is a souvenir from my trip. And it's mm. a souvenir from that moment in time where I realized that I was in control of different aspects of my career, my social circles, and, I was in a, and I'm in a really good spot. And then it just kind of reminds me of these little micro moments that made me feel like that girl. Like, for example, I was in a diner, a classic American diner, and I had the coolest waiter serving me. And he just comes up to me and he's like, has anyone ever told you you look like Shay Mitchell? <gasps> Dead. On the floor. I was like, I'm done. I can retire. Anyone ever compares me to Shay Mitchell, one of the most beautiful women in the world. That's a really good one. That's a really good one. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that's how I got cocky for the rest of the trip. <laughs> I was like, I'm Shay fucking Mitchell. <laughs> Every time I saw him the next morning being like, give me my eggs. Thanks. I'm Shay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who, how, how do you come back from that? No, you can't. I peaked. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't even look like her. She's you, beautiful. You have elements of her. Brown? Yeah. And long hair? <laughs> mixed. <laughs> she mixed. Shay, if you're listening, you are so beautiful. <laughs> um, so, actually, I kind of like this. Maybe we should now, 
you know, in this point of our happiness and in history, maybe we should think about what's something that we want to market as maybe other than your shirt. I love your shirt, but something that you want to pass down Mm -hmm. or I don't know, just something that we can, that we can use as like a physical memory. Okay. Not physical. And this is going to sound quite meta, but every single time we have these podcasts and we talk about these specific things, that episode becomes like a time capsule to me. Mm. Like I don't, I mean, I know you don't really listen to our episodes because then you have to hear our voices and it probably drives you insane. I do listen to bits of it. Do you, bits of it (laughs) you listen to the snippets that you edit for social media marissa and i have very different approaches to the podcast because i'm a wham bam done and i'm a let's listen through and pick up on things that we want to bring forward or remove altogether but one thing i did before and i don't know what compelled me to do it was i went all the way back to episodes where i knew i was struggling and i listened to those and then I went forward and listened to one where I knew I was doing well. And it was just like this really nice moment of being like, wow, look at all of that change. And mm. it all happened within, you know, two years of creating this. And like, I think this podcast is something that I want to be able to be like, these were segments of my life. These were, these were moments that I thought were precious enough to talk about and to tell the public about. Mm. I'm looking at the mic. I'm like, should we give the kids the mic? <laughs> is this our heirloom? <laughs> Your mother's recorded their whole lives. Actually, that would be quite cute. That would be cute. They would be vintage by then. Or these headphones. (laughs) Or these cups. (laughs) (laughs) Just anything in the room. Anything in the room. (laughs) These these earrings. (laughs) Let me just. In this moment right here. I wonder what I would pass on to my children. Has your mother or any woman or father someone passed something precious to you my dad gave me a pen once because he knew I had a knack for writing so that was always really meaningful and then he told me that one day I would inherit my grandfather's pen I don't know if he remembers that but I hope that's still true because that would mean a lot my mom always said that we would inherit all of her jewelry um which she still wears on every single finger and every single toe so Mm. pending Mm. (laughs) these earrings actually I she gave me yeah. So these we are, could give the earrings. We could, down. but yeah. I can't give these ones because she, well, I could because then it would be they were your two mother's? generations down. Yeah, they're from, they're Tiffany and Co. You would never tell because they're so like. They're cute. I had to refurbish them. I had to get oh, them to shine again. Oh, I love that. And by doing that, I made, I just put it in water with a lot of soap and just waited. <laughs> Scrubbed it with a toothbrush and called it a day. Yeah, that works. Yeah, and they're nice and they're vintagey and they don't look new, which I actually really liked. Okay, so would you say that those are precious to you? Like, which one, like, what's one that you're like, this means something? It's, mm, it's not really an heirloom, but, like, I have a handwritten letter from my grandmother. Oh, that's beautiful. And it was from a sixth grade project where I had to learn about her experience during the war. Oh. And we had to get like multiple, f- like a written interview or like a, a phone interview because she was based in England. Or she, And the last one was for her to write me a letter and it came in the mail late. It came after the deadline of the project. So I was a bit frustrated because at 12 years old, I was like, damn it, I needed that earlier. But then to this day, I still read it because it's, it's a physical archive of something she experienced. That is beautiful. I'm going to force my mom to write me a letter after this. Yeah. <laughs> my mom would my mom would not write me a letter. Though oh, you know what's the one thing that's cool that I found that was not passed to me, but made me take stock and kind of see my mom differently was I found her travel diary from when she was in her early twenties before she met my father. Oh wow. Yeah, and it was stuff like caught train to this, like caught train to I don't know, Vienna, cried because was late, thought I didn't have like thought I couldn't get there met two beautiful men they showed me the way <laughs> and i'm just like ma dot 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 okay ma. didn't there just no diary entries for the next few days so i can only assume she was just on a bender <laughs> <laughs> but yeah those cool things that's very sweet i have one that actually um when i received it it made me very emotional out of and i didn't expect to get emotional and it was this recent trip that i had to germany and a little backstory. I never met any of my grandparents because my parents were later in life parents and, and I just 
never met them and let alone the German side of my family because growing up in Asia, I always primarily identified as Asian. So going back to, in, to Germany in November last year was a little bit of a reconnecting to my German roots and understanding that side of my personal history. So there was a moment where I was at dinner with my aunt and she and, and we were talking about my father's mother. And it's interesting because I I didn't feel like my father ever spoke of her enough for me to paint a picture of who she was as a person. I mean, I knew that he was, she was his mother, but I didn't really know her personality. And so I would ask my aunt, like, what was she like? And to start hearing these little stories about her made me miss a person I had never met before. Mm. And then it really like broke me actually getting a little like emotional now is that my dad paused after they were speaking about her and he just said, she would have loved you. Oh. <laughs> and it made me like teary over this love that I, I never knew that I missed. I never knew I could have had. And then my aunt gave me her ring. That is a, that's a really big deal. It was a really big deal. It's giving me goosebumps now to mm. remember this. Are you tearing up? No. <laughs> You're tearing up. It's okay, I'm tearing up a little. Um, she gave me her ring and it was like, and when my dad saw it, I could see this like pause that he had to take because he said, I haven't seen that ring for years since, since her. And she wore this every day of her life. And then I put it on my finger and it was like this hauntingly beautiful, just like generational moment of just love. Mm -hmm. And then I started to cry. And over this woman that I didn't know that just knowing that she would have loved me, whoo, yeah, because Ooh, you, it was powerful. You built a new connection to somebody mm. that was already connected to you just without the physical interaction. But think about it. Like, to those of you who never met your grandparents, too, there is no doubt that they would have loved you. Exactly. And also that you carry within yourself a lot of parts of them that you wouldn't be able to pick out. They're just part of you. Isn't that stunning? I read this thing the other day that was like, we still haven't met all the people in our lifetime who are going to love us. Oh, I fucking hope so, because we're really looking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we think about it. We have so much more of life of, to meet people who are going to adore us. But at the same time, we also don't know the amount of love of the people who passed before us. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like we are so loved. Like before, after death, everything, what we know now, we don't even know the love that's about to enter and the love that has existed because it's just, it's, it's like, too vast for us to grasp. It's like the opposite of generational trauma. Mm, I love that. Yeah. What's the opposite of trauma? Ooh, do we? Mm. What is, that's good. What's a good thing to Google? Oh. Good stuff. <laughs> what's the opposite? Of, I don't, I think love. I'm going to search it real what's quick. What's the opposite of Opposite of trauma or trauma antonym. Trauma. Antonym. Opposite. Well, there is a synonym new word. is the I'd word that's like an antonym. antonym. The opposite of trauma. I don't know. I might have to ask Natalia, my therapist, who specializes in trauma. <laughs> I think it's just love. It's healing. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> generational healing well i well generational healing is what we are all doing which oh is yeah why it sucks it can only continue to get better you know but right? it also i feel like it's also really hard particularly for our generation just because the world that we are in versus our parents time is so different mm -hmm. um so the healing that we're doing is almost like making up for the healing that I don't know if they noticed. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. It was like healing for all the things that they never got to speak about and recognize and also working on our own healing while the world is on fire every single day. Mm. And then also trying to put ourselves in a position that when we are having our own families, we're not going to pass that on to our children mm. and trying to like cap what generational trauma we bring onto them because chances are we're going to bring a little sprinkle. Do you think we'll have like a checklist? We'll like salt bay trauma into our <laughs> kids' lives. <laughs> Am I going to give you the trauma of not being enough? No, but I will give you the trauma of being too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, which one? It's like, well, yeah. I was too much, so we're going to give you too little. Yeah. <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> it's just a 
pendulum swing so of bullshit. Up, but it's so true. It is. I got a lot and that spoiled me. So I'm not going to give you enough to let that spoil you. I mm. watched this Instagram reel of this, the most emotionally intelligent four-year-old taking care of their two-year-old i've seen it oh my I've seen it. god oh this my kid god. is like excuse me i know that you're angry but you can't hit people it's okay to be mad but maybe breathe and i, I was like i want that kid to just like talk to me right yeah i want to like if i cry to have this child be like it's okay for you to be sad but you'll feel better soon like oh I like to think that my dog does that, but it's just sending me telepathic messages. She's just a full bagel on the beanbag right now. And when in reality, she's probably looking at me like, are you going to feed me yet? <laughs> and I'm just there being like, yes, she's messages. Like, I figured out if I look at her just right, she gets all gushy and gives me a snack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, she's like, she's giving me a pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> Pixie, the motivational speaker. <laughs> mm -hmm. She is a darling though. All right, guys, I feel like this is a good note to start to wind down. We're keeping today short and sweet. We hope that we injected some vitamin motivation into your life. This was such a positive this really episode. Was. This is like and, a really gushy one for us. And you us. know, I am also, I'd love to also hear from you. Is, is there like an heirloom that has been bestowed upon you from your family lineage? Or is there something that you already know that you're going to give to your generation of children? Trauma. No, 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 healing. no. Healing. Healing. Both. <laughs> yeah, both. I feel like everyone needs like a little bit of trauma because... It's what gives you personality. Exactly. Yeah. All of our personalities are a trauma response. Like if you're healed... Nah. Boring. If you're too woke... Ew. Yeah. Like no one likes an angel. Mm, yeah. Mm. No. No. <laughs> no. You need it to be like 65-35. 70, 30. Yeah, and like no one wants a Stepford wife. Like you want a good person with edge, you know? I want a bad person who's actually deep down really, really good. But that's the thing we all fall for that like bitch slaps us. Oh, still because haven't grown is, out of it. Still have not grown out of it. The thing is like, it's not to say it doesn't exist, but I think all of us are notoriously bad at finding that one. Because there's good in everybody. But whether they have the capacity to reflect that outward is another challenge. You know, if you, I saw this because I was Googling Pinterest quotes to help me find inspiration for my captions. <laughs> this is how it works. This is the world of a content creator. This is how it goes. And it was like, if you are ever wondering if you're a bad person, remember that bad people don't wonder if they're bad. Well, yeah, they don't question it at all. Exactly. Yeah. So you're not a bad person. Well, I don't I, know how we got here. I was going to be like, I knew that. <laughs> I, I'm I a know, great person. I don't know how we got here. <laughs> it's like, wait, cycle back. Pinterest. We're, we were about to close off. Pinterest captions, conclusions, healing, trauma, personality. Oh, yeah. All those very artsy um, captions I have are all Pinterest quotes. <laughs> <laughs> all of mine are just like, what's you, a pun I can come yeah, up with? Yeah, you thought of them yourself? Really, yeah, all of them. All of them. Okay, no, no. Most of, like, the short quotes are Pinterest quotes. The long sentences about my life are journal entries. Do you copy direct, like, word for word things you've written in your journal for your Instagram? I use my journal as inspiration of what's on my mind, and then I PR it. Ah, the marketing. Yeah, I market it to, yeah, because uh, to still be real, still be from a real experience. For sure. But... You just vague enough it. to be applicable to everybody. Give it a little spit shine. Yes. Yeah, no, I get you. Because if like if I was putting up Instagram captions from my diary, it would just be like, things are bad, I am sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, we should wind down. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, uh, don't forget to go check out Marissa's shirt on the channel and then message Ooh. me about who this celebrity... Can I say oh. celebrity in quotes? He is, though. Isn't he? 20 years ago. He's still doing stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's fucking hilarious, you guys. That's I love you, him. He's so cute. You need to message me because it's hilarious. But he's really cute. He is. He is. And that's <laughs> it for us. We will catch you another day. And take care. Bye.